Bill Leubel, who is professor at the German Breast Group in New Eisenberg, uh, Germany. Uh, the presentation will deal with pediatric kinase mutations and resistance to anti-HER2 therapy. Dr. Leubel. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to present our work here for the, to the press. We investigated the PIK3 CA mutation in patients treated um, with HER2 positive breast cancer treated with chemotherapy and anti HER2 treatment. Uh, PIK3 CA mutation is actually the second most common mutation in breast cancer, and about 20% of the primary breast cancers harbor a PIK3 CA mutation. It seems to be a little more common in hormone receptor positive than hormone receptor negative breast cancer, and it has been found that alterations of the pathway might be associated with, uh, uh, with HER2 resistance. Um, we used um, uh, FFP material uh, from patients recruited into two clinical trials, which I explain in a second. We uh, performed the central HER2 and hormone receptor testing, used only those with a tumor content of more than 20 percent, and uh, performed the mutation analysis by Sanger sequencing and concentrate in XA9 and 20, which uh, harbor the hotspots of more than 90 percent of the mutations. The PCR, uh, which is the outcome, is defined as uh, YPT0 and YPN0, so no uh, non-invasive residuals are included. And we looked at two studies, the Gepa-Quinto study, where the patients received either lapertinib or trastuzumab, and the gepa Sixto study, where the patients received the dual combination of the two agents. This is the Gepa-Quinto study, 620 patients had been randomized either to trastuzumab or lapertinib in combination to chemotherapy for six months. And this is the gepa 6 study, where the patients, all her two positive patients, received actually a dual combination of lapertinib and trastuzumab in uh, combination to a taxane anthracycline uh, containing chemotherapy, and the patients were actually randomized to carboplatin, yes or no, in this study. Um, the PCR rates are shown here for the whole cohort and the HER2 positive uh, set. These are on the left side, you did the Kepa Quinto results, where we had a significantly higher PCR rate in the group receiving trastuzumab than lapertinib. On the right side, you see the PCR rates for the HER2 positive uh, cohort of the Kepa 6 study, where we had a, a higher PCR rate of about 34%. We uh, found about 20% pig 3 ca mutations in the HER2-positive uh, cohort from both studies, the kepa quinto and the kepa 6 study on the left side. And the kepa 6 study also included about 300 triple uh, negative tumors where the pig 3 ca mutation was significantly lower with only 7.4%. We looked also uh, if there is a difference in pig 3 ca mutation rate according to hormone receptor status, and actually overall there is, was no difference. Hormone receptor positive and hormone receptor negative harbored a pig 3 ca mutation of 21% in the HER2 positive cohort. These are the results from the gepa quinto study. Uh, on the left side, you see all uh, patients. We had the chance of 119 patients uh, where we could uh, perform a pig 3 ca mutation analysis, and it was uh, numerically higher for those who did not harbor the mutation. It increased from 79 to 26 percent. And when we look at the different treatments, it seems that this difference is confined to the group who received the trastuzumab, uh, but there is is no difference in the lapertinib treated cohort. They received the same PCR rate irrespective of the mutation. These are the data from the GEPA-6 study, and I remind you all patients with the double blockade. On the left side, you see the whole cohort, including the triple negative. There is a significantly different increase in PCR for those patients who did not who have a wild type. Um, uh, pig 3 ca status and an increase from 22% to 42%. And looking just at the HER2 positive cohort, this, this is the main effect here, an increase from 17% for those patients with a mutation to 37% for those without a mutation. And if we divide it further to the hormone receptor state, it, it seems that this effect is exclusively confined to the HER2 positive but hormone receptor positive cohort. And those harboring a mutation had the chance of a 
PCR of only 6.3% compared to 30%. There was no statistically different effect in the hormone receptor positive, uh, negative cohort. This was also an independent predictive factor for PCR um, uh, according, uh, next to the hormone receptor status. And if we look at the treatment effect, uh, this is a cross-study analysis, therefore we have no p-values here. And you see on the left side, the mutated core, there is no difference uh, between the three treatments, lapertinib, trastuzumab, and the combination, but the patients with a wild-type status seem to derive a benefit from trastuzumab or even the combination of the two agents. So in summary, we found about 20% of our HER2-positive tumors had a PIK3CA mutation, and we found there was a significantly higher PCR rate in the patients treated with a double HER2 blockade. Um, the patients with a hormone receptor positive, HER2 positive status harboring a mutation only achieved a PCR rate of 6.3%. And the difference in PCR rate between mutant and wild type is largest in the patients receiving the double HER2 blockade. Similar PCR rates for the different anti HER2 treatments were actually observed in the PIK3CA mutant HER2 positive cohort. So, discussions, our results are in concordance with those presented at the ECC from Neo Alto and the Neosphere study, showing that PIK3CA mutated tumors have a significantly lower PCR rate, and it seems especially low in those uh, with the hormone receptor positive status. And I think we need new treatment options for those patients, and one of those might be uh, a PIK3CA targeting agent, such as this investigated in the Neo Phoebe study, which is shown. In in the, um, the poster session of today. I would like to acknowledge all the participants and this work was funded within the U project Responsify. Thank you. Questions? Hi, um, so Neil Osterweil with Medscape Medical News over here. Um, we saw last year in the Cleopatra trial, they did a PIC3 uh, kinase analysis and they found that uh, Patients with the 3CA th uh, mutation did indeed have a lower response, but they did have response to pertuzumab. Um, is it possible that with better or different HER2 agents, we might see a better response and see this in combination with a PIK3 agent? Um, this is a very good question. I mean, the Cleopatra trial was a trial in the metastatic setting, and the majority of tumors were not from the metastatic uh, uh, metastasis, but from the primary tumors. So it's very difficult um, uh, to t uh, draw any conclusion from a metastatic uh, trial, but it seems that uh, the, just the wild-type patients uh, in our analysis and those of others derive a higher benefit from the double blockade and not uh, the mutated patients. Okay, thank you. Dan Keller, Oncology Times. Um, the data went by kind of fast. Can you clarify something? Um, even though the mutation does not appear to affect the activity of lapatinib. It, those results, uh, efficacy still look lower for many cases than um, trastuzumab. So um, especially in HER2 negative disease, would you still um, choose something like trastuzumab over lapatinib, even though <clears throat> it didn't lower the lapatinib efficacy, it still was lower overall anyway? I'm not sure I understood you. Because I you said HER2 negative, you mean HER2 positive? Well, in HER2 positive, but the lapatinib was not affected by the mutation, it looked like. But still, lapatinib did not perform as well overall as trastuzumab anyway. Yeah. So even with this deficit in the trastuzumab activity, is it still better for Which many patients? Uh, for according to our data and those of others, it looks like that trastuzumab is better. Um, in the near adjuvant setting, at least, they achieve a higher PCR rate if it's con given concomitantly to the uh, to chemotherapy. And if you look at the PCR rates, it looks like uh, they, um, especially the mutant tumors, they have actually no effect of the anti 2 agent. The PCR rate seems like equal to those just uh, receiving uh, the chemotherapy. Caroline <coughs> Helwick, ASCO Post. So are you saying, referring back to Neil's question, that this might be an effect in the neoadjuvant setting and not other settings of breast cancer? 
I mean, these are the main results are from the near demand setting so far. I mean, I have a couple of uh, data from the metastatic setting, but I would still differentiate it. And uh, in the near demand setting, we have the short term outcome PCR. We have no data on long term outcome so far, we, so we don't know the effect. We have data on a prognostic effect of pig 3 ca mutation from the FinHair study, where it seems in the first three years the patients with the mutation did better. Um, but then this uh, effect diminished. So there might be, this might be a good prognostic factor, but uh, a worse predictive factor in the near event setting at least. Okay, one more question. So what about with TDM1? Has it been looked at with that drug as well? Because pertuzumab, we, we just talked about, maybe it's different, but how about TDM1? I haven't seen any data on t uh, TDM1 according to pig 3 ca mutation, but I'm sure there will be some. There's something on yeah. Emilia. Yeah. Thank you.